You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. We present Selling One Soul by John Fryer with Ben Morris and Annabelle Spinks-Jones. Tell them to run it this evening, if at all possible. Yes, it is time-sensitive, and it would help if it was out by the end of today. We've got to get the evening edition. No, I don't want it to appear biased either way. It is the balanced opinion of leading thinkers on the subject, and that is what it must seem to be. Yes, there are bound to be the odd naysayer. These days there always are. But new and difficult problems often require radical solutions. Yes, I did write that. Glad to see you are paying attention. One day you could even be me. Imagine that. It is a beautiful day. What could be finer than a stroll through the heart of the capital? The sun is shining and I have a spring in my step. You, Simon, get to spend the day in the genteel atmosphere of the office and on the internet, and oh, how I envy you. And don't be late for your radio interview. No one can see you, so enunciate, enunciate, enunciate. Remember, you're from a think tank, so sound like one. I have to go, Simon. Things to do and ears to bend. Now, I was meant to be meeting someone. Uh, yes, uh, I remember her name. Uh, Mary, Joanne, Ethel, or something. Of course, I meant Claire. Don't mention that to Robert. You know that he can get a bit tetchy about that sort of thing. Yes, the fact that I keep forgetting his daughter's name. Listen, just make sure that the article is printed within the first ten pages on the left-hand side. People read left to right, Simon. Left to right. I shouldn't have to tell you these things. Good. I have to have it in the public domain before this evening's meeting. I need the minister and his team to have read it before I speak. The world doesn't stop for bad news, Simon. It rather enjoys it. Well, time to go. See you this evening. Am I late? One should never have to ask, young lady, for one should always be early. Oh, right. I see. We create the image of ourselves. Do you believe that? Do you believe that if we believe we can fly, then we can? No. And that is the problem with the youth of today, brought up on YouTube and too much realistic thinking. The problems of the world are only too evident for all to see. Feed the starving, clothe the destitute, save the whales, or whatever it is we are saving today. The rainforest? Yes, if you like. You don't want to save the world? Of course we all want to save the world. But does that mean that we should all be poorer for doing it? Shouldn't we just do it because it's the right thing to do? <laughs> I too was once uh, as young as you. I know that right now that must seem a very difficult thing to believe, but I was not always the intellectual giant you currently see before you. Really? I would never have guessed. Oh yes, young lady, for I may mingle with the proletariat, but do not think for a moment that I swim in the same water. Believe me, I'm not thinking that. Excellent. For you are in for a rich and educational day. Today you shall have access to the one talent I have that truly matters. Namely, my mind. Um, thank you. You do not sound impressed. I do not blame you, for we do not know each other. But I remember you when you were no more than a bubbly, gurgling baby. That was a long time ago. Not as long as you would like, Clarice. Uh, it's Claire. It is correct. Well remembered. Um, yes. Good. Let's go. Where are we going? <laughs> Although I would enjoy nothing more than spending the day here in St. James's Park, sadly, Mammon calls. Who? 
the substance by which the world turns, for it is mammal that dictates and controls our lives. Are you sure? You are still in the first flush of youth in which the world is full of wonder, whereas I am a man of experience. We may, and some say occasionally do, hope that the goodness of the human soul will rise from its slumber and spread its warmth across the land. Do you always talk like this? Ah, you have noticed my style, my attitude, my devil-may-care way of seeing the world. Not many people I know speak like you. I suspect you know very few like me. And yet, here you are, walking through St. James's, speaking with me. No doubt, like so many before you, you are asking, what am I doing here? Why have the cosmic forces that shape our lives brought me to this point, this crossroads in my life? I'm clearly not as deep a thinker as you are. Depth has no bearing in this matter, young Karen. We are all swept up in dimensions beyond our own scope of understanding. Are we? And it's Claire. What? Oh, yes, sorry. Come, we must away, for it is time. Time for what? For the first stage of your education, Joe. Your first steps into a wider world. A world of enlightenment and knowledge. A world in which, once you have stepped into the rabbit hole and through the mirror, there is no way you will ever want to return to the world you thought you knew. I hope you are following me. I'm meant to be shadowing you. And you shall be. But this is not my world, you know. I didn't, but it doesn't matter. My ambitions lie elsewhere. In our youths, didn't they all? I'm meant to be learning something from you. And you shall be, young Elizabeth. Oh, you shall be. Good morning, Gordon. Ah, Mr. Pentagast. Good to see you back in these hallowed halls. Yeah, well, corridors. <laughs> How has the private sector been treating you? We rarely see much of you these days. Too busy, Gordon. Too busy. Not like the old days. I remember when we were both on the up. The party, our party, was in office and in power, with influence beyond our desires. I could pick up a phone and demand to speak to members of Her Majesty's government, and ministers would quake in their chairs. Ah, yes, Gordon. The title, Special Advisor. It never leaves you. Do you miss the old times, Mr. Pentecost? One can never go back, of course. But I do feel the odd twinge of sadness when I look around these walls. The policy meetings, preparing green and white papers, the late night sittings over in the house. Happy times indeed. Is he in? Which one? Old Latham. Or have they put him back in the tomb of political careers? Oh, uh, haven't you heard? The PM had a bit of a bloodbath last night. Old Latham's gone. Gone? Back to the obscurity of the back benches. After that uh, episode with the sheep, the cockatoo, well, I think he was always on borrowed time. Yes, that was bound to make it into the papers at some point. <laughs> It will if he forgets which way to vote on a three-line whip. Is that why you're here, miss? To learn the ropes from the master? Well, I... Linda here... It's Claire. ...is joining me here today to see how the wheels of the state turn for real. I'm hoping to ease her in gently, as it were, with a visit to old Charlie Burstow. If old Latham has gone, presumably Charlie has taken over. Well... <laughs> Myself and Charlie, Sarah, go back many, many years. I remember him at his first by-election. Did you win? 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 No, he was slaughtered. The rest of the party wrote him off, but I saw some potential. I remember saying, Charlie, you may have almost no talent for politics in any shape or form, but don't let that disillusion you, or more importantly, stop you from trying again. And after he had wiped away the tears, that is exactly what he did. Uh, sorry to say, Mr. Pentecost, 
Charles is out as well. What? Old Latham and Charlie Burstow are now reduced to following the debates from the members' bar. Then who on earth is left? Who has the PM chosen to occupy this great office of state? Anyone other than Rupert Bolingbroke. After all, we all know what he's like. Especially after some of those things in the press. They didn't come from you, did they, Mr. Pentagon? Gordon. Gordon. A man in my position could never publicly take credit for such things. Although I did think old Rupert would never get back after those headlines. It's not Rupert, is it? Probably no one else would do it. Ah. They've all seen what's happened to the others that gave it a go. Well, it's good to see the old boy is still going. Proof, if it were needed, that the current government isn't just filled with twenty-somethings that don't know the cost of anything and rejected the values of those that came before them. <clears throat> Has old Rupert forgotten the old days? Water under the bridge and all that? Oh, your appointment is still on the cards, Mr. Pentagast. You're his first meeting of the day. Well, I'm sure he hardly even remembers me. Oh, no, Mr. Pentagast, no. Mr. Bolingbroke remembers you only too well. Does he? He told me, personal like, that you were the one meeting that he wouldn't cancel. If his life depended on it. <laughs> he is definitely looking forward to becoming reacquainted. Did he? He said to me that following those stories in the newspapers, it set his political career back by almost 20 years. All those tales about him and that call girl. Yes, well. And the goat. Yes. And that porcupine. That must have been delicate. <laughs> yes, well, thank you, Gordon, for that trip down Fleet Street's memory lane. I believe it's time to see the Minister for the Department of Communities and Local Government, Mr. Rupert Bolingbroke. Rupert, you old devil, how are you? You're looking as healthy as ever. I see that ministerial life suits you. Nice office have you decorated recently. There's definitely something new about this place, something exciting and interesting, something to take housing policy by the scruff of the neck and give it the kind of shake that this country has been needing for a very long time. It's great to see that the Prime Minister has not overlooked you and that finally your time has come. Now... I know that your schedule is busy, whose isn't these days, so shall I come straight to it? Time being money, as they say. Who is your friend? Oh, hello, my name... Ah, yes, my mistake. I should have introduced her to you when we arrived. How did you get stuck with him? Oh, you see... Penelope here has joined me today to witness the smooth operating of a modern governmental department. He means what will play well in the press. The media is a very important consideration, Rupert. We cannot afford to ignore them. No, we cannot, especially when such negative stories can follow you for so many years. Uh, yes, but we don't want to get stuck in the mistakes of the past. No, indeed we do not. Do you remember the man with the porcupine hat that used to be at every campaign event I held during the 97 election? No matter where I went, he was already there. It was almost as if someone had given him a schedule. I suspected it was a member of the campaign team, some disgruntled party worker, but I could never be sure. The past, as they say, Rupert, is the past. Nothing to be gained by going over the errors of yesterday. It is today and tomorrow that are important. We learn from our mistakes, young lady, and we remember them. I see. Yes. Well, 